Okay, welcome to a very special episode of Tech Tuesdays. My name is Sam Sheffer. This is Casey Neistat. Do more people use Tech Tuesday than just me? I thought I... Yes. I use that at one of my jobs, in fact, as like a Snapchat I, show. I thought I... I stole it from Casey, is what I invented he's getting at. that alliteration. So I, I want to talk about cell phones, smartphones in general, because I feel like we're kind of at a pivotal moment in history where we have reached ubiquity, where 80% of Americans have smartphones, um, where everyone is always on their phones. No matter where you look, people are just thumbing through Instagram. Um, mindlessly almost at this point. It's become an addiction for a lot of people, but I wanna just start with rattling off some stats here. So on my YouTube analytics, in 2019, 75% of my views came on a phone. I think that's profound, that most of the really? people that are gonna watch this video are watching on a phone. Apple sells 200 million iPhones every year, totaling over a billion iPhones sold since 2007. The landscape of phones has changed drastically in only the last, call it like two decades, let's say. So the Nokia 3310, I'm gonna put it on the screen, that thing came out in 2000. That was my first cell phone. And I was, I don't know, 12 years old and my primary use for it was playing Snake, and making calls. What was your first phone? My first phone was, I, I want to say it was like a Siemens phone, and I picked it out at the cell phone store because it was the only one that had a speaker, like a speaker phone on it. How old were you? I don't know, teenager. Okay. My first real, real phone though that I remember was the tiny Nokia from Charlie's Angels 1. I'll be right in. Charlie needs me. Not the fat one, like the little baby yep. one. It was like so, Yeah, yeah. that was the coolest. So you got it for what reason? What, the little one or the big just one? Just like your first phone in general, like what was I, the... I just thought it was cool. Just like I had a phone. A, I remember like before that, like if somebody called me at work, I worked in a restaurant, like they'd be like, my boss would come back and be like, yo Casey, phone call, make it quick. And it was like a normal thing to get a phone call at work. Like someone would call your work and ask yeah, for you. Yeah, they'd call the restaurant, they'd be like, hey, can I talk to Casey? And they'd be like, yeah, hold on. So you remember a time before everyone had a phone in their pocket? Yeah, dude, I'm like 700 years old. And what uh, what was that like? I mean, how did you find people? What was what was making plans like? Because I don't really remember a time without phones. So I was 12. I was a kid then, but okay. I remember the first time I ever spoke on the phone. I remember the feeling. It was the StarTac. Oh, man. And the battery the on the one. back of that thing was like the girth on this bastard was like an <laughs> inch thick. So I just remember like, I needed to call my mom until I was running late and my friend Joe's mom, Carol, Mrs. Alexander was like, you can use my phone. And I would be like, mom, I'm running late. Guess what? I'm talking to you on a cell phone. And it like felt like- It felt futuristic. I remember that. Okay, so then you got your phone and what sort of, did your life change at all once you had a, a cell phone as no. they were called back then? No. no, I didn't have anybody call me and there was no social media. And there was no social media. So that's what I wanna talk about. Hand me the razor over there. So just uh, a couple of years later, uh, Motorola introduced this. This is the uh, Razer. You probably know what this is. They sold, I think, over 100 million units what was of that, this. was that, 2004? This was 2004, oh, yeah. Wait, so, it's about to happen, everybody. The sun is going away. The sun is going away. Okay, so in 2000, the Nokia 3310, I'm gonna put pictures on the screen of like what phones looked like, like back then, and then sort of, in the mid 2000s, we got something like this, and then phones started to get like, these were called feature phones, where it had a really good keyboard, you had some games on here, and they started to become more than just like a mobile phone. And then in 2007, really not much longer after that, Apple debuted the iPhone, uh, which kind of changed the landscape entirely, I would say. Do you, I mean, you obviously remember where you were when the iPhone was announced when it came out. Yeah, Did you get the like, original one? I was the first person to get the first iPhone. At least that's what we were told. Like, we slept in the streets overnight. I made a movie about this, man. Casey, you let me out with the seat. Is there anybody waiting in line? Ah, uh, no, not right now. You're going to start. Line right up, he'll be right behind you. You'll be line pioneers? All right, great. We'll be right, right back guys. with our tents. It was like 2007. Was that for Steve Jobs, that movie? I think that's what I named it, okay. yeah. Okay, okay, and okay. My big okay. brother and I slept out. We got the first iPhone. And the interesting thing was, is like, I really depended on my smartphone then. My Blackberry. Like oh, my life. Blackberry. My life was the Blackberry. The Blackberry. Oh, we like the Blackberry. And when I first got the iPhone, it was like three months, and I was like, it's cool, but I actually need a phone, not a toy, and I went back to my Blackberry for like what, two generations. What 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 does that mean though? You needed a phone, not a toy, the hardware keyboard, BBM. I mean the biggest thing with Blackberry was email. Like this is before you used any communication. Even text wasn't a mm -hmm. thing then, it was just email. 
and email on a BlackBerry was seamless. It had push email. So the email is like within seconds of it being sent, your phone would shake and the email, respond and put it away. But and that was a big deal for you to be able to do email wherever you were. Yeah, and I might be wrong about this, but at least how I had it set up, whoever my internet, uh, whoever my email provider was at the time, on my iPhone, it was only POP3 email. They didn't oh, have wow. push. So you had to open it or have it set every 15 minutes. It would check the server, pull down my emails, and then let me know. And that just felt so antiquated and slow and sluggish compared to the BlackBerry like in and out. So we're talking now about 10 years ago. This was the original iPhone, but BlackBerry was still very much a thing. Nokia was very still, very much still a thing. At what point do you remember where the phone became like, this is a tool now. Like this is part of my life and per, like persona online. And I guess like with the I mean, with social a, media. It was a confluence of, and they happened around the same time, social media and then the camera becoming a real camera. The camera. When those things happen, and they did happen around the same time, like when the, when Twitter and Facebook at the time became ubiquitous yeah. on mobile, yeah. was the same time as the camera getting to a place where it became really practical. Like before you wanted to share your photos, you had to have photos you wanted to share. That's right, and you needed to carry, like there was a time I remember in college where um, you'd go to parties and all the girls carried around their little point and shoot cameras. I was one you know? of those girls. Yep. And you, you had the sidearm, right? And now it's like Always. you have one of these. So, and, and just the timeline is really insane. Like Nokia in the early 90s, this, or excuse me, in the late 90s, this in the sort of mid 2000s. And then Apple, I feel like really had a grip on things in 2007 with the multi-touch capacitive display versus like the resistive mm -hmm. touch, uh, like the Palm Pilots and all of those things. And now every single phone looks the exact same, save for this. Like a cell phone now is just a giant display. It has become a mobile computer way more so than a phone. Yeah, I think that all those things merged. Various means of communication have merged into one gigantic pile of goo. And that pile of goo is accessible via like this little black piece of glass that we keep in our pocket. And so now, uh, going into the next decade, 2020, there are smartphone manufacturers that have now figured out a way to have a foldable display. Now, if you recall, this is technically a folding phone, right? By yeah. literal means. Um, and raise the, there's a new Razer, uh, Samsung's got a folding phone, I'm sure Apple's gonna do one. It's 2019. What does the smartphone look like in five years? Make a prediction. Um, I think that laptops or anything that requires data entry via keyboard, mm -hmm. that will not change. That okay, will, so this will, will still, exist like this. The iPad will never get rid of this, no matter how good their bullshit keyboard is on that. Like, the computer will always persevere, okay. in my opinion, okay. for a while. And the use case will become less and less, but this will always persevere. I think that these things will figure out how to consume everything that sort of an iPad or a tablet does. Tablets are still vastly superior for data consumption, for news, for like editing media photos, for editing also. media, like all of those things are still way more satisfying on a big fat screen that you manage like this. Sure. So I, I think in a few years, the folding screen, and this is my bet, and I said this and I'm giving shit for this. Mm -hmm. I think the folding screen is the future. I agree with you. I just completely. think it's gonna get better. Like this implementation, it's V1. Of course it feels janky and weird and heavy and awkward. Yeah. But they're gonna get it. And anybody who's ever messed with the fold, like this thing when you want your Twitter, it is such yeah. a different experience. Yes, yeah. because you have a sort of regular phone that folds out into a tablet rather than just this kind of like glass slab. I bet Apple's gonna do a folding phone it's just a matter of time. I just think that we've got to a place where the market is completely saturated and everything is now the same, right? And and everyone has a phone because you can't live life without without one. And I think that like most, a lot of these jobs now sort of require you to have some sort of like phone or even like social media presence. And I think that's only going to get worse. There is no going back from the phone, right? Like society is is driven by the fact that you are you're able to be contacted no matter where you are yeah. we have lost our sense of privacy i don't think there's going to be a regression no there won't be no no there won't be at all and i think that's a pretty existential perspective that's I, right i think like about the devices themselves yeah. I think what's really shitty in the last two years is that We've reached a critical mass with cell phones. Yeah. They are all glass rectangles. And they all look the this same. This one has a tiny chin, and this one has no chin, and this one has a circle hole punch, and this one has a pop-up screen. 
they're all the same. It's all iterations on the same kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, and like the the camera on the iPhone 11 is probably the best, but it's the best, and it's two percent better than the camera on the Note mm-hmm. 11 or 10. Which one are we on here? The latest 10. Note. Like it's maybe this much better, maybe. And so you're at this point where like the only thing that's exciting now is the software. Yeah. And it's really kind of leveled the playing field since the days of, where'd you put that raise? Since the days of this, where it was all about what's the new hardware gonna look and feel like. I guess the kind of, my, my thesis here is the, the evolution of this stuff is so rapid. And I think there are some, some, some guesses around AR and wearables and things like that, but I'm not as bullish on that. You don't think spatial computing will take off in the next five years? No, I think that keeping something in your pocket that yeah. you can use to communicate with is a 25 or 35 year old idea. <laughs> yeah. And it's something we're all okay with. And before it was in our pockets, it could be in a suitcase or in your car or in your house. It made sense. But this idea of having something on our face all the time, no, I think it's a way bigger thing for humans to overcome. I think Google Glass was amazing, yeah. but it was really hard to integrate it into your life the way this thing integrates into my life. That was uh, Cell Phone Thoughts with Sam and Casey. Stay tuned for next week for another episode of Tech Tuesday. Probably not with Casey though. Thanks for watching.